Hi Nicholas. To begin with, um, can you please, um, in your own words, point out to us how Germany has been able to achieve its commendable renewable energy targets so far? Uh, and then um, please tell us a little bit about what the plan is for the future as well. Okay. Um, about 15 years back, Germany started a quite, I would call it, adventurous uh, journey. This journey was committing to, uh, to climate protection on a global scale mm -hmm. uh, and also committing itself to a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2050 by 80 to 95 percent. This also involved a very strong ramp up of the use of renewable energies. And uh, right now, I would say Germany is on a quite good way to, to achieve these long-term targets. Um, right now, about a quarter of all uh, electricity requirements is supplied by renewable energies, mainly wind, uh, but also biomass and uh, solar, uh, solar power. Mm -hmm. um, this was made possible uh, by a quite ambitious uh, incentive scheme uh, set up in the year 2000. Um, guaranteeing, yeah, or yeah, guaranteeing a feed-in tariff for different uh, sources of renewable energies in, in uh, um, yeah, at a different level of uh, incentivization. This was also accompanied by other measures. Uh, so this quite famous uh, renewable energy feed-in tariff was not the only incentive, and I think this was is one key to the success of this German model, if you. Uh, want to call it like this. It was not one single measure, not one single incentive, but a set of uh, different incentives trying to kind of interlink. Okay, and how does Germany plan to scale up from here? Already achieved quite a bit already, but how do we mm. move forward? From here? So the, uh, the long-term goal is still valid, mm -hmm. uh, 80 to 95 percent uh, greenhouse gas emissions reductions, and uh, the energy sector plays a core role, also the transport sector. Um, this feed-in tariff as uh, started in the year 2000 is now kind of getting reduced. The, um, you do not get that much uh, euro cents anymore per uh, produced kilowatt hour, but also the systems, uh, wind turbines, uh, PV modules decreased in, in cost. So I think on this side uh, there needs to be an appropriate match of uh, production costs and incentivization. Okay. Um, additionally, there is a nuclear phase out in Germany, mm -hmm. so uh, by the year 2022, no nuclear powers are supposed to feed electricity into the German grid any anymore, and this also needs to be kind of cushioned by increasing the energy efficiency together with a, r a further ramp up of renewable energies. Okay, so the nuclear, uh, so renewables is uh, looking to take that place, that nuclear, the gap that nuclear is going to leave. Is it going to be completely filled by uh, renewables, or is that a mix? No, it's not supposed to be kind of completely filled by renewables. It's it's more a system approach. Okay. So you you can quite uh, accurately plan how much electricity will not be fed in by nuclear power plants in, anymore and then you can see would this need to be filled up by renewables do we ramp up have to ramp up renewables by this and that amount mm -hmm. or what will be the role of energy efficiency how strongly can we reduce the uh, the consumption of electricity in that respect okay okay and as someone who's worked uh, in the field of energy in India as well as in Germany could you uh, comment on what sort of a model we could in India uh, could be adopted to scale up renewable energy? Uh, does it could it be incentive based like Germany has followed, or is there an, uh, some way that we can improve efficiency like you're mm -hmm. saying? Could you comment on a model for India? I think India is on a, a quite good way in several fields. So you have these. Uh, um, have several national missions like uh, the solar mission. There's also, uh, as I learned, uh, a wind mission uh, coming up. So I think India is quite, quite uh, uh, well tackling now these uh, challenges. Of course, this energy, this energy transition, mm -hmm. as done or planned in Germany, cannot be replicated in India. Nobody would expect that. So and. Um, 
this is why India also needs to, to find, find its own way. Of course, India could take a look at, at Germany and see what, what are the challenges uh, that are currently uh, virulent, or that, are, that are currently there in Germany, and what can India, uh, which type of challenges can India expect, especially when it comes to the grids. You know, uh, the green energy corridors approach that India started last year is a very, is an extremely interesting approach tackling the integration of renewable energies into conventional power grids. And this is exactly uh, the, the sector or the field India also should also start because now in Germany we experience that the grids are not able to kind of, or they, they, the grids did not grow uh, in Germany according to the growth of renewable energy electricity generation. Mm. And, uh, uh, this is definitely something that uh, India is, is quite quite ahead of uh, uh, the global development as well. Also, when it comes to energy efficiency, I think there are very many uh, options you could you could take in, in energy efficiency, particularly in the building sector. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, India has, has quite many other challenges like energy access in, in general. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but this is I think it's it's a quite uh, ambitious and a quite difficult mix of challenges, but I'm quite sure that India will, 